Hey, this is a screencast series called Vim on Alphabet. My name is Josh Branchad, and this is episode 15 in the series. In this episode, we'll be looking at the dash character. The first thing I want to show isn't a Vim binding itself, but rather has to do with the command line options you can pass to Vim when starting a new session. To show that, I'm going to have to save and quit this file. Pro tip, running WQ, which stands for write and quit, is one of many great ways to exit Vim. Let's take a look at Vim's command line help with dash dash help. If we scroll up a bit, we'll see the very first argument is just dash dash. You can use dash dash to tell Vim that any other arguments that follow should be treated as file names. Even if that file name starts with a dash, don't dare think it is an option, it is definitely a file name. To demonstrate that, let's run Vim dash u. This dash u is an actual option that Vim accepts. But as you can see by this error, it requires an argument. What if I were intending to create or edit a file by that name of dashio? Including dash dash, I can do just that. And that opens up this dashu file that I had prepared. Do with that what you will. Let's head back to our main file for the episode. Seeing as I already brought up the dashu option, it's worth mentioning a little bit about it. If you're ever trying out new plugins or modifying your vimrc file, there's a chance you might experience some weird behavior if things aren't meshing quite well. You can try booting vim with limited add-ons to help figure out what's going on. Dash u none will load a completely bare bones vim session. Dash u defaults will load vim with no plugins or vimrc files. The next use of dash is in normal mode. Dash will motion the cursor up a certain number of lines. This is similar to the underscore character that we saw in the previous episode. You can see if I hit three dash, the cursor will go up three lines. If I hit D3 dash, it will delete my current line, the three lines above, and then leave the cursor on the line below. I can hit V3 dash to get a visual selection. Those are some of the various things you can do with that motion. It's not that popular of a motion though, which is why Tim Pope's Vim Vinegar plugin overrides it to behave in the same way as our next use case. If we have a netrw browser open, we can use dash to navigate up a directory. This is a small thing that makes moving around a large project that much more efficient. As a reminder, netrw is a file system browser built into Vim. We can start exploring from the current directory with the explore command. This is netrw. You can see under the quick help that dash goes up a directory. So let's say I'm exploring some code down into this deep directory. I look around and then want to go back up. I can hit dash, 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 and I'm back where I started. netrw is pretty deep, so you should definitely check out the help files to learn more about it. That's all there is for the dash character. As always, dig into the help files for more details. In the next episode, we'll be looking at the plus character.